We're going to move on to uh, a talk by uh, Professor Kirk Semple, who's a professor of environmental microbiology, Lancaster Environment Centre at Lancaster University in the United Kingdom. And uh, the talk is called Recirculate, Driving Eco-Innovation in Africa and Building Capacity for the Future. As he makes his way up on stage, let's take a look at this quick video. Recirculate, Driving Eco-Innovation in Africa, Building Capacity for the Future. Professor Kirk T. Semple is Professor of Environmental Microbiology at Lancaster Environmental Centre at Lancaster University in the UK. He is involved in developing and implementing the university's international strategy partnerships, particularly in Africa. Well, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, before I start, I'd just like to thank um, Mr. Rakesh Wahi for the very kind invitation to come and talk about Recirculate. Um, I feel like I'm an imposter in the room, really, because I am really a research scientist um, who's come to the sort of the international space in the last sort of five or ten years. And uh, initially, a completely selfish from a completely selfish perspective. But actually, as I've grown up um, as a professor, I've become more altruistic, and I hope that comes through in this presentation. The other thing I'd point out is that, yes, I'm from Lancaster. A lot of you will be saying, well, where's Lancaster? I mean, there are people in the UK who don't even know where Lancaster is, so don't let that worry you. Um, um, we're not 700 years old. You know, there are very few universities globally that are. However, um, we're only, well, we're 55 years old. I'd like to say that I'm still younger than the university, although it may not look it. Um, and we do, but we do have a link to Cambridge, which is one of those ancient universities, because when the um, university was founded in 1964, they gifted us our ceremonial mace for, you know, ceremonial um, activities such as graduations. Um, one of the things that I'm really interested in, obviously I'm interested in international and particularly from the research space, but what I'm inter also interested in is how we can combine what we learn and develop through research into our teaching as well. And I think that's, that's um, very important. So um, Recirculate is, um, is, a, is a project that's funded by the government. I'll talk a little bit more about this in a moment, but it's to the tune of seven million pounds. Um, and it's working with partners um, in West Africa, but also in Eastern and Southern Africa. And I'll, I'll come back to that um, a little bit later on. So this slide is pretty much redundant, actually, because given everything that's been said and discussed this morning, I mean, I've been blown away by the, the quality and the breadth of the discussion. But I think it's um, safe to say that to achieve our development as a society, whether it's economically, socially, and and of course, as you'd expect me to say, with a, a key eye on the, on, on, on the environment, um, it's clear that Afri the African continent needs young, dynamic, skilled, motivated um, individuals to deliver innovation across all of our sectors. So um, the Recirculate project comes from um, a, a, a huge amount of funding um, made, made available by the British government uh, called the Global Challenges Research Fund. Um, and it's, it's been um, made available to address global challenges through disciplinary and interdisciplinary research. To strengthen capability re for research and innovation within the UK, but also with developing, developing country partners. And where appropriate, uh, to provide agile response to emergencies and other opportunities. Now, there are a few caveats in there. One is that, yes, um, in a, any project has to have at least one developing country partner, um, and it also has to address at least two of the UN's sustainable development goals as well. Um, so, really, the, the, the underlying tenet of, of, uh, of Recirculate is that it's a shared vision. Um, it, it brings together um, interdisciplinary and even transdisciplinary research across the academic space. And it's there to support new partnership approaches 
uh, to enable African researchers to grow transformational impact through working with, in and for their communities at all levels. An impact is delivered through eco-innovation to help the development of new products, processes, interventions and services that are both of benefit to, the, to society but also to the environment. And it's really underpinned by um, an entity that exists within Lancaster University, the so-called Centre for Global Eco-Innovation, which has only been around for the last five years. It's been incredibly successful. It's won over £25 million worth of funding. And what it's there to do is to ad address global challenges with the private sector. Okay? And very often, those problems that are, are brought to the centre are coming from the private sector with academics actually you know, bringing their research support and capability to address those questions. In the UK, that's um, quite a novel approach, but it is gaining traction at other um, universities in the UK. A key tenet to this is, is collaboration. Um, and over, over, over uh, the years, the university and colleagues have, have been working on how to best develop collaboration. And, and the three components to this for uh, CGE are how the university can interact with uh, industry and the private sector, but also how it can interact with government and government policy. And in actual fact, bring the three, to, bring the three entities together. Um, and that's been challenging. Um, it has required a huge amount of funding, and I've already mentioned that already. But what it helps to address are um, youth unemployment, um, development of business opportunities, employability skills within uh, the student body, and also deals with issues of inequality, whatever they may look like. And um, in the last couple of years, um, a Centre for Global Eco-Innovation has been set up in, in Nigeria, um, our first international hub, and it looks, like breaking, it looks at breaking the boundaries between the academic sector, the private sector, and the government policy sector to be much more effective in addressing some of the challenges that the country and indeed the region faces. So Recirculate is, is basically um, a project that looks at capacity building across uh, different communities to develop a safer circular water economy. Now water is, is key to, to, to everything that that we do in society, and as a microbiologist, I understand that without water, life would not exist. So it's absolutely crucial. And in the African context, there are many challenges against uh, wa the water and the water economy in terms of climate change and drought, or indeed flooding, um, issues around waste and energy, uh, drinking water sanitation, water pollution from industrial activities, and of course, food production as well. And what Recirculate tries to do is to bring many different dis disciplines together to try and address some of these, these problems and issues. So it is interdisciplinary, and it really is a, about a fusion of science and technology um, to address these issues in the physical, digital, and biological spheres. So what does it look like? Well, it's made up of different work packages, um, scientific work packages at least. Um, uh, we have water for sanitation, water for energy, and water for food. And what you see is there is that we have a virtuous cycle where um, the waste that's produced from um, uh, protecting water supply can actually be used as a source of energy through anaerobic digestion and other uh, technologies. And that produces a waste product called digestate, which is actually very, very nutritional, nutritionally rich, which can be used as an alternative fertilizer for crop production. That and it, the production of food also feeds back into human health and well-being. And what you, so you have this virtuous cycle, um, and in the UK and elsewhere in the world, of course, this has been discussed in terms of a circular economy. So that's the sort of science and technology component. But there are other elements to it as well. There are uh, elements around um, entrepreneurship and innovation. Okay? 
Now, the British government are very, is very keen that these projects try, uh, extend beyond the period of funding. Okay? And one of the things that keeps me awake at night is how do we do this? And this is where engagement with um, business opportunities becomes crucial. If you, can, if you can generate business opportunities within this model, then the chances are that you will, you will extend its longevity. And another important point is about how we tell people about this. And this is where knowledge exchange and engagement with communities becomes so, so vital. Okay? If, if we can't communicate that to the communities that we want to work with, well, it's going to be a struggle. So, um, that's Recirculate. Um, so, as I said, we're following the CG model. We're, we're trying to bring university research, um, government and industry closer together to break down some of these boundaries and promote what we're trying to do through the project. But one of the things that struck me re more, most recently is that there's a, there, is a, there is a component missing here. Um, and that is in terms of schools. Now, there's been a lot of discussion about secondary or, or, or basic education. Now, in order to... to uh, affect real change, it's no good trying to tell me that I have to change my behavior, okay, that's something I'm doing wrong. Okay, I can appreciate it and I can try and modify it. But really, for, for me, in this case, um, bringing young people on board is, is absolutely crucial for long-term and real impact. And by bringing schools and universities together, by bringing schools and business together, it's possible that we do um, address some of the challenges that we, we've discussed earlier in, in this presentation, but also more widely in, 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 in the summit um, today. And it's only through this fusion of, of different, se different sectors trying to work together that I believe that we can generate real impact. Now, I'm going to give you an example, and this is, this is, this is an example from the UK, but it does reach into what we're, what we're doing um, with our partners in, in Africa. So, um, close to Lancaster University, there's a school called QE Studio. It's a relatively new school. It's actually embedded in a much older school. Um, and what uh, the school is doing is providing traditional GCSE and A-level education, as you'd expect. But in order to break some of the barriers and, and address some of the problems that we've already talked about today at length, um, they've introduced a pathways approach the pathways approach is where um, the uh, students will pick on a particular d discipline, whether it's health, engineering, environment, sport, music, whatever it is. And with that, they will engage with companies. Now, the, the head of the school um, has um, managed, unbelievably, to bring in nearly 600 companies into the, into the body of the school to work with the kids. Um, so this is from ages of 14, up to, up to 19, um, and, the, and the kids are really developing a, an awareness and a skill set through working with these companies. And it's, what we're trying to do at the university is engage with this process as well. And so it was my idea, I suppose, well, not only my idea, that um, we uh, looked at this in terms of recirculate and what it's trying to achieve. Okay? So we looked at the the, the sort of programs, the pathways that so match quite nicely onto, onto Recirculate, and there are a few, health, engineering, environment, and food. Now, within the school, they have entrepreneurship and innovation and business opportunity content, which is very similar to what uh, Recirculate is trying to do. And then we matched the, the, the pathway, the school pathways, with the science and technology pathways, which are in the red boxes here. And what, we try, what we're intending to do, or what we are doing, is working with the school kids on those pathways to enhance uh, their awareness of what we're trying to do in Africa. Now, the other thing that's important, as I've already explained, is knowledge exchange and communication. So we're actually using the, the arts uh, uh, pathways as ways of communicating that further. But it, that's not where it ends. Um, what we've also done, we've also, um, through Lancaster University, Ghana, and also through the University of Benin, we've developed links with schools um, 
locally in, in those parts of, of Africa. And what we're, what we're doing is bringing the school kids from the northwest of England to Africa to work with the kids in these schools. We're, we're building demonstration uh, projects so that the, the kids can actually engage with them in a tactile sort of way and help their understanding and broaden their, outpro um, their um, outlook. And it, for me, bringing the kids together with the, the, the researchers allows co-creation and co-development and uh, crucially the co-delivery of the project. And it's only really through this that I believe that this will ensure um, impact through cultural and indeed generational change. So just to finish off, really, um, I think um, Recirculate offers an example of how collaboration can support capacity building, okay? It is only one project, okay? So it's, it's, it's early days yet, um, but I'm, I'm very, very optimistic. And it's only through this genuine collaboration with the education sectors, together with business and government bodies, that will affect real and long-lasting environmental, social, and economic change. And to deliver real impactful change, uh, the African content, continent needs, as I've already said before, young, skilled, and motivated people to deliver the innovation across all sectors. Thank you very much. <laughs>